Saturday early morning, getting some work done. And a lot of people have requested to see what it, like, what is your coaching like? Some people ask, you know, show us the day-to-day -day stuff. Highlight your clients. And I will be trying to talk to some of my clients to see if they're okay and open with being on YouTube. A lot of this is personal and it's difficult for someone to even reach out for a coach in the first place. And most people don't want to make their lives public or even their transformations. This is something they're doing for themselves. But I understand that you guys want to see what's going on behind the scenes with all the people that I work with. And the website is coming soon. I've posted some pictures on Instagram before of some client transformations, but I'll see if any of them are open to maybe sharing their progress from you know, week to week or even month to month here on YouTube for you guys to see what goes on. But as far as the behind the scenes thing go, I had a couple of clients just recently sign up. So I'll show you the process that I go through real quick. And you guys know that as soon as son someone signs up, I have a phone call with them. I write down any notes that need to be written down. And then over here on this side is Evernote. So that's where I keep all of my clients, whether they're old clients, new clients, all their information is stored in Evernote so I can access it from the computer, from the phone, from my laptop, anywhere I go. Then I'm creating a coaching manual for every single client. So that is, that will go over some of the information about the training program, my approach to nutrition, anything they need to know about check-ins, all of that is in a document in there. Then I actually create the training program right here using Excel. And then over here, I have a spreadsheet on Excel, which will go over their cardio, their nutrition, their macros, and any changes that need to be made. My, there's a column for me called the coaches column, which I make changes to. And then there's a spot for them to write personal notes and anything like that. So pretty much all of that information goes into Dropbox and we share a Dropbox folder. And that's how I work with my clients. And I'm always trying to make the process easier for me and then make it more enjoyable um, and make it so they can access their information anywhere. That's why I use Dropbox. So we don't have to keep sending emails back and forth every single day or every single week with updates. We share files in a folder in the cloud. So that's kind of how I'm doing things. If you guys want more information on how I run my coaching or maybe some advice on what you guys could do, let me know. I'm not sure if there are a lot of coaches out there watching this or people who aspire to be personal trainers. But I think what's most important is that every single person has their own method of doing things. This method probably won't work for you. It's something over the last few years that I've been trying to develop and I'm still trying to figure out what's the most efficient way to get this done. So far this has worked, but pretty much every day I spend here trying to make little tweaks just to make it a better experience for myself and for the client. So that's what we're working on here. Gonna put in a few more hours of work and then we're going to, uh, today's Saturday, so I'm not too sure what's going on. We're gonna hit the gym. It would be a rest day, but can't just sit around and do nothing. So we might go in and just hit some arms. So let me get this done and I'll talk to you in a bit. Shh. So a slight change of plans. We were gonna head to the gym, our actual gym, do an arm workout, some accessory stuff. I feel like throwing in a little bit of traps, so I'm gonna hit some shrugs. We decided instead of driving to the gym just to get an arm workout, here at our community, we have like a little, I guess it's sort of like a hotel gym. So we have this little universal setup right here. A little couple of dumbbells over there. You guys have probably seen this before. And a few treadmills, and that's pretty much it. So what we're gonna do is work with some of the dumbbells over there. Super system stuff with cables over here and we'll get a pretty good workout in with pretty limited equipment. So we're gonna start out with here as a superset, doing some rope press downs, and then we're just gonna go right into a cable curl right here. So we're just gonna go higher rep here. So we're doing anywhere from probably four sets, 12 to 15, even up to 20 reps on some of the exercises. Got the big bowl of jello right here. And you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail, thinking about prep. It wasn't clickbait. I was thinking about prep because the last time I was in this community gym, what you see right now, was two days out from my show. So I was getting my depletion workout in and just thinking about, I'm about to step on stage in two days. I remember there was no one in there. It was late at night. And I was just, I was so focused. All I was thinking about was, I knew I wasn't gonna sleep because I had to drive a few hours to get to the show the next day but just all the work that was put in, that workout really meant nothing. It's like all the work has been done. The only thing left to do now is to rest up, get tan, get on stage and do my best. And that's exactly what I did. So going back to that, I just 
you know, going being back in that gym, just I remember doing posing updates in there, waking up at 6.30 every morning and walking there and doing my 30 or 40 minutes of cardio while watching a YouTube video or listening to a podcast, something just to get my mind off of the fact that I had to do so much cardio, my calories kept dropping and dropping. And that was kind of like my time because usually there was no one in the gym at that time. My walk over there was nice. I was doing daily videos at the time, so uploading to YouTube every single day. On the walk over there, sometimes sharing my thoughts with you guys, the prep feels, on the way home, letting you know how I felt after doing the cardio and just spending some nights in there working on my posing. So it brought back a lot of memories by stepping in there that day. And then also Jello. This was a prep lifesaver. Anyone who's dieting, cutting, or contest prep, sugar-free Jello. This book, this is a big bowl. It's like twice the size of my head. And this is two packets. And I believe each packet is 20 calories. So 40 calories for this, a few grams of carbs. Top it with this, and this helped me some days on prep where I wanted some extra volume. You have a sweet tooth, but you don't have really any calories to work with. My calories got really damn low during prep. This definitely saved me. So why am I eating sugar-free Jello, 40 calories worth, if I'm now lean bulking? Shouldn't I be eating like real Jello or ice cream or something? So tonight I'm actually going out for sushi and some drinks. When I go out for sushi, I go out for sushi. I don't hold back. I eat what I want to eat, and I have some drinks, and I have a good time. So throughout the day, I try and keep my calories lower because I don't know what tonight's going to bring. So there's no point in me just eating high-fat, high-carb foods earlier in the day when I know I'm going to be having a little bit of fun at night. So this is just an easy way to kind of fill your stomach up a little bit without getting the extra calories in because tonight we'll get plenty of calories in. So people have been asking, are you going to compete again? After your first show, can you see yourself prepping again? And I would say right now, the current state that I'm in, my current mindset, I would say yes, I can see myself getting on stage again, but I'm honest with myself. I've seen my physique you know, dialed in or as good as it's ever been during my last show, and I'm able to take a look at myself and realize that there are weak points there, and I need to bring a more impressive package if I want to step on the stage again and be proud of you know, the work that I put in in the off-season. So right now, lean bulking, up in the calories, taking advantage of that surplus, and working on those weak points, working on you know, just bringing a different level of intensity to the gym, being more consistent with my training, focusing more on ensuring that I am in a calorie surplus. And, you know, the things that you don't want to work on necessarily, like let's say, for instance, your calves, your abs, the boring stuff that you throw in at the end of a workout, I'm realizing how important they are and what I neglected last year before I stepped on stage. And that's a good way to find out were you really training as hard as you thought you were? When you get shredded down to your lowest body fat percentage and you take a look at yourself and you realize, holy shit, I don't have calves, I don't have abs, I don't have rear delts, I don't have mid-back, whatever it is, now is your time to work on it. The off-season is where you build your physique and then when you're about to step on stage, that's when you show it. So you have to give yourself a long enough off-season to pack on that muscle and that's what I feel like I need to do right now. But yes, I can see myself getting on stage again sometime in the future. That's kind of what's going on now. Just a quick update for you guys on you know, will I compete again and how it kind of brought back some prep feels. So I'm gonna eat this bowl of jello. I'm going to finish editing this video a little bit, work on my website a little bit more, and then we're heading out for some sush. You all ready to go? Almost. We're about to head out in just a minute. Right now I'm wearing a white Zara sweater, some blue Zara jeans, and I'm gonna throw on, I'm probably gonna wear, what shoes do you think? These ones, right? Yeah. So these brown shoes. You'll never be able to 100% match your leather shoes to the band on your watch. So you can see this brown doesn't match this brown or this brown or this brown or this brown or this brown. And that's okay because no one's actually, you're never going to actually be like this wearing your watch right next to your shoe. So you just go for something that's close. And what I'm going to do is probably go with this, this one, one because it also looks like, it just looks classy against the white sweater. I think it looks good. Goes good with the blue jeans. Um, so we're gonna go with this watch. You guys know that I've been working with Movement for a while. A lot of people on YouTube here are working with Movement. But I absolutely love the company. You know that? Thank you. I love the company. I love the assortment of watches. So you could wear like a different watch every day if you wanted to because they are extremely affordable. And what I like about them is the ability to change the bands if you want to. So let's say for instance, I'm gonna wear this watch tonight. So I think it goes pretty well with this. But let's say that I didn't like this face, but I like this watch. Instead of needing a tool to take the band off and put a new band on, they actually have this little clip right here. All you do is push it in, focus, but... and that's it. So as easy as that, and now I could take, let's say I want this face on here. I could do the same thing here, take this off, 
and just clip it onto there and it looks like a completely different watch. So if you didn't want to buy two watches, you could buy a watch and a separate band. You got something to go with your brown shoes, your black shoes. So if you guys are interested in anything movement, I will leave my link and description, <laughs> my link and code in the description box below. And they also have, for anyone who's interested, some pretty cool sunglasses they just recently came out with. And guys, if you're looking to buy a girl something, or ladies, you're looking to treat yourself, I don't think any girls watch this, but <laughs> this is Brittany's watch that she actually got for movement. So I'll just show that real quick, just in case anyone wants to buy their girl a gift or whatever. But that's pretty much... I don't know if you can tell, it's like the face of it's almost like iridescent, like it changes color in different light. Yeah, so it's like a pearl white yeah, kind of color. Really pretty. And they have a few different kinds, and they have glasses, sunglasses for females as well. So really cool stuff on the Movement website. Bunch of new stuff just dropped, so make sure to check it out. But I'm going to put this back on. We're going to head out. Some sush. Get some sush. So it's the next morning. Sorry, I didn't record. I know you guys always want to see what we're eating when we go out, but I did get a ton of sushi. We got a couple of drinks. We had a great time. We were with some other people, so that's why I didn't take out the camera and start recording, you know, the food and everything. But take my word for it. It was good. We had fun. And now it's actually the next day, so we're going to end this video off here, and I'm just going to pick up and start a new video right now. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it as always, and we'll see you the next time you watch one of my videos. First one being mechanical tension. So that is time under tension through a full range of motion. And notice how I said through a full range of motion because right now if I flex my bicep as hard as I can, I'm isometrically contracting it so there's tension there, but there's no full range of motion. So.